In this lesson, we'll be tracking and solving our camera as well as getting our project file set up. Okay, so we're starting off in 02 underscore begin in your Nuke X project files. And I want to go ahead and just get our project settings ready to go. So just come over here to your properties bin, hover over with your mouse, and hit the S key to bring up your project settings. We're going to go ahead and change the frames per second and the full size format. So frames per second for the piece of footage we're going to be using is going to be 29.97. And it has 142 frames in it, so let's change that to 142 for the frame range. And then where it says full size format, we'll drop this down and create a new format. And we'll call this 720 HD. And this is going to be 1280 by 720. And you can hit enter and say OK. So now we've got our project settings ready to go and let's go ahead and bring in our piece of footage. So we're just going to use a regular read node for this. So you just come up here to your image nodes, choose read. And we're going to go into your project file so you can go up a folder here, go into your reference files and we're going to choose city footage and we want to use the city footage uh, from 0 to 42. So go ahead and open that up. And let's take a look at it with our viewer. Go ahead and hit play. Let that cache all those frames for us. So you can see what we're working with here is just a little rotating handheld shot that goes from kind of one side of the parking lot over to the top of this building. And what we're going to be doing is creating a piece of text that almost looks like a giant logo that's going to sit on top of this building. Okay, so to get this process started, we want to go ahead and track this footage so that we can basically create a map of the live action camera that was used um, and make a 3D camera that mimics its movement. So this is going to be um, a match moving lesson and a lot of times that intimidates people whenever you say match moving but Nuke X makes it really easy for us to be able to track our footage and create that camera with um, a pretty automated process. So let's go ahead and start that. I'm going to stop the footage from previewing and with my footage selected we're going to come over here to our 3D nodes and go down to camera tracker. And if you just choose that, it'll take a second, but it's going to drop in your camera tracker node. And then there's several different options you have to choose from here. But before we really start refining this and changing a lot of things, I'm just going to track our camera as it is. So just go ahead and click track features. And you can see that the camera tracker just starts clicking away. Um, and it works pretty fast as well. And you can see that for the most part, this looks like it's getting a pretty good measure of the data. Um, we'll see in a little bit that sometimes it's not always as accurate as you want it to be, but a lot of times that happens when you have a rotating shot like this. Panning shots are a lot easier to match move into. Rotating shots, the camera just has a harder time measuring the parallax. Um, but for the most part, this looks like a pretty good track. So um, let's go ahead and solve our camera. So we'll go ahead and click Solve Camera. And what this does is it basically says, okay, these are all of the track points. And now if a camera was looking at this in the 3D space, this is what it would see. And by solving that, it looks at which points you see here are green, the ones that are red and the ones that are orange. The ones that are orange are the ones that didn't um, maybe have as accurate of a track. It had a higher error rate. And the ones that are green are the ones that worked well. And the ones that are red are the ones that should be rejected because because they are not working at all. So the problem that we run into with this shot is that the part that we're 
just panning through really quickly and not the part that we come to rest on is the part that has the most accurate tracking data. So you can see most of this is green and then this area where we want to place our logo is mostly orange. Now we do have a few points over here that are green, but it's so close to the edge we might not get the best data. But let's just go ahead and um, keep working through this. Once we place our image is when we'll really be able to tell if we've gotten the greatest solve. And we can go back and refine this after we've already placed our image in the scene. So what we want to do is create our scene. So go ahead and click create scene. And what this does is it gives us a camera, a scene, and a point cloud that comes out of that camera tracker. So what this point cloud is, is if you go into the 3D view of this shot, you'll be able to see all of these little points in 3D space and also how the camera looks at those. So what I wanna do here is kind of organize this a little bit better. So I'm gonna zoom out, we'll pull our read node up here, pull these two over to the side a little bit and then we'll go further over to the side for these two pieces of our shot. Um, and we can hold down control to add some dot nodes in here to make everything flow a little bit better. Now some of these lines you can't get away from having a diagonal like this one right here um, because it's linked through this information. So unless I place it right here, it's going to have that, um, that green line. But that's okay. I'm not too worried about that. I want to have it over here because of the way that we're going to be organizing the rest of this project. So let's go ahead and take a look at the 3D view of this. We'll ch go up here to the top where it says 2D and choose 3D. And if I just middle click and start to move around, you can see what this point cloud looks like. This is what I was talking about when I said point cloud. And it actually looks like it didn't do a bad job. This is kind of what our scene looks like. Um, if we select our camera, just go ahead and open that up in your project, uh, in your properties bin. And you can see the camera right here is kind of looking out to the side. We're towards the end of our shot. And this is kind of where that building is. Now it might be a little bit more to the left um, over here, but we're not really seeing a lot of those points because they didn't solve as accurately. But we have a really nice map of that rotation and those buildings and kind of how that's shaped where we have, um, if we go back into our 2D view, this building here on the left, and then it kind of has this open area here to the right. So for the most part, this is a pretty good uh, representation of the shot through the point cloud, but it's um, still probably going to need to be refined a little bit later on.